third characteristic of love. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the third characteristic of mysticism is love. Who will not see that we have here no literary exercise, but the fruits of an experience of peculiar intensity? It answers exactly to one of the most modern definitions of mysticism as, quote, in essence, the concentration of all the forces of the soul upon a supernatural object conceived and loved as a living person. Quote, love and desire, says the same critic, Quote, are the fundamental necessities where and where they are absent man even though he be a visionary cannot be called a mystic such a definition of course is not complete it is a valuable however because it emphasizes the fact that all true mysticism is rooted in personality It is therefore fundamentally a science of the heart. Attraction, desire, and union are the fulfillment of desire. This is the way life works. In the highest as in the lowest things. The mystic's outlook, indeed, is the lover's outlook. It has the same element of wildness. Hmm the same quality of selfless and chaotic devotion, the same combination of rapture and humility. Hmm. The parallel is more than a p pretty fancy for mystic and lover upon different planes are alike responding to the call of the spirit of life. The language of human Passion is tepid and insignificant beside the language in which the mystics try to tell the splendors of their love. They force upon the unprejudiced reader the conviction that they are dealing with an ardor far more burning for an object far more real. This, quote, this monk can give lessons to lovers, unquote, exclaimed Arthur Simmons in astonishment of St. John of the Cross. It would be strange if he could not, uh, since their finite passions are but the feeble images of his infinite one, their beloved, the imperfect symbol of his first and only fair. Quote, I saw him and sought him. I had him and I wanted him, says Julian of Norwich, in a phrase which seems to sum up all the ecstasy and longing of a man's soul. Only this mystic passion could, can lead us from our prison. Its brother, the desire of knowledge, uh -huh, may enlarge and improve the premises to an extent as yet undreamed of, but it can never unlock the doors. Uh -huh. It's a brother. Seems the desire of knowledge is the brother. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Well, we come to the fourth point of the characteristics of mysticism, according to Evelyn Underhill. Mysticism entails a definite psychological experience. Uh -huh. hmm. That is to say, it shows itself not merely as an attitude of mind and heart, but as a form of organic life. It is not only a theory of the intellect or a hunger, however passionate, of the heart. 
It involves the organizing of the whole self, conscious and unconscious, under the spur of such a hunger, a remaking of a whole character on high levels in the interest of the transcendental life. The mystics are emphatic in their statement that spiritual desires are useless unless they initiate their, this costly movement of the whole self towards the real. Thus, in the visions of Matilde de Matteberg, the soul spoke thus to her desire, fare forth and see where my love is. Say to him that I desire to love. So desire sped forth, for she is quick of her nature, and came to the Imperium, Imperium and cried, Great Lord, open and let me in. <laughs> Then said the householder of that place, What means this fury eagerness? Desire replied, Lord, I would have thee know that my lady can no longer bear to live. If thou wouldst flow forth to her, then might she swim, but the fish cannot long exist, that is left stranded on the shore. Quote, go back, said the Lord, I will not let thee in unless thou bring to me that hungry soul, for it is in this alone that I take delight. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Hey. We have said that the full mystic consciousness is extended in two distinct directions. So, too, there are two distinct sides to the full mystical experience. Uh -huh. hmm. 1a. The vision or consciousness of absolute perfection. B, the inward transmutation uh, to which that vision compels the mystic in order that he may be some extent worthy of that which he has beheld, may take his place within the order of reality. He has seen the perfect. He wants to be perfect too. The, quote, third term... the necessary bridge between the absolute and the self can only be he he can only he feels be moral and spiritual transcendence uh -huh. in a word sanctity or for the quote the only means of attaining the absolute lies in adapting ourselves to it, unquote. The moral virtues are for him, then, the obligatory, quote, ornaments of the spiritual marriage, as Rise Brock, Brock called them, though far more and their presence is needed to bring that marriage, uh, marriage about, unless this impulse for moral perfection be born in him. This travail of the interlife begun, he is no mystic, uh -huh. though he may well be a visionary, a prophet, a mystical poet. Moreover, this process of transmutation, this rebuilding 
of the self on higher levels will uh, involve the establishment uh, within the field of consciousness, the making central for life of those subconscious spiritual perceptions which are the primary material of mystical experience. Uh, the end and object, object of this, quote, inward alchemy will be the raising of the whole self to the condition in which conscious and permanent union with the Absolute takes place and man ascending to the summit of his manhood enters into that greater life for which he was made in its journey towards this union the object commonly passes through certain well-marked phases which constitute what is known as the quote mystic way this statement uh, rules out from the true mystic kingdom all merely sentimental and effective piety and visionary poetry no less uh, than mystical philosophy it brings us back to our first proposition the concrete and practical nature of the mystical act <laughs> hmm. we have to stop here we stop uh, reading about the characteristics of mysticism in this case Number four is entails a definite psychological experience. We're reading uh, page 45 of Mysticism. <clears throat> hmm. Evelyn Underhill. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.